We're putting together a 15-part series on the rise of, of social skills because I've been asked a lot of questions about this and I'm noticing myself that this is increasingly becoming the driver of what makes for success in the modern world. So if you're a corporate worker or want to be and you don't have uh, social skills, you're dead before you even start. So this will walk you through how to do what you need to do, how to acquire the skills you're going to need, what specifically will get you success, however you define that personally, professionally. This is more of an intro video because uh, we're going to run through it in the coming weeks, but for right now, I want, you, I want to context this. And context starts with the first part, technology and the rise of social skills. I work in technology. I don't know where you work. I don't care. Your social skills will be the main driver of your success going forward, whether or not you realize that. People have to know, like, and trust you. Your coworkers, your customers, everybody you come in contact with in life is an open doorway for you if you handle them the proper way. And if you don't, it shuts the door. So your social skills will be very important. In a manner, they were not as important as yesterday. Back in your grandparents' generation, they were workers in factories. For the most part, and the factory had to do with whether they were producing a good or a service or something where there was a larger corporation that they supported. They were a, a line worker, a worker bee, they were in the trenches, whatever the term is, they weren't directly determining things off of their personality, right? So they would produce the good or service and the good or service would sell itself if it was good. It competed in the marketplace the way you know it and you probably grew up the same way. However, customers have changed. Factories and all that bit have, have evolved. The modern factory is a corporation. The modern corporation, modern, was run this way for a very long time. It was interchangeable parts, interchangeable people. Same way it was in the old factory days of uh, Henry Ford, right? If you had someone who ran a division or a department and they had to be able to, <clears throat> what's it, the wreck? They had to have a wreck. This is what the person's skill set would be that we would need if this person X were to leave. And you remember this. You've gone through the interview process yourself. Tell me more about what you did about this, 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 and this. Now it's about wh who are you? Like, what kind of a person are you? And here's why. The customers are no longer as primarily interested in your product as they are in the people and the company behind the product. So if you're talking about a throwaway low-end item like shopping online or something like I easily understand by looking at it one, two, three, I understand it. I don't need to have that relationship. But if there's any type of complexity, if there's any type of trust required, big ticket items like a house or life insurance or algorithms or anything that I don't fully understand as a consumer but I am going to use or I must use, that's going to require trust. Trust requires I know who it is I'm dealing with. I'm not going to just go to any old dentist and let them drill my mouth. I'm not going to just take on any old algorithm and let them parse my data and see how I trade. I need to know who is the person or the firm with whom I'm dealing. And that means relationship. That means relationship sales, as the old term for it, is sales. Sales, as we traditionally knew it, of pound them till they buy, all those tactics and tricks and, and, and closing coffees for closers, remember that bit? Overcoming objections. Uh, 17 strategies for success, how to cold call, smile and dial. All that bit is gone. It's gone forever. And here's why. Google. Nobody needs to be learning about your product through you. The truth is they don't want to learn about it through you. They've got the reviews. They've got former employees. They've got the internet and the network of all the social. They want to know the people that they are dealing with first, and then they will check out your product. And guess what? I work in a very high technology world of artificial intelligence, algorithms that trade for you. And they work. They work phenomenally. In some cases, they're exquisite. However, they may be the best mousetrap in the world. No one is going to touch the button if they don't trust me, if they don't like me, if they don't think I'll be there if there's a problem. And if they don't trust the firm or the management behind the firm or whatever it is that's providing this thing that they're using, they need to know it. Because guess what? They won't use it. As much as it's great and as much as it'll help them, at the end of the day, everybody makes decisions based off of themselves. This is not a, uh, I'm not trying to be down about life here. This is, an, this is reality. People make decisions based on themselves. Your customer is selfish. There's nothing wrong with that because you're the same way when you're a customer. So as long as you recognize that as a seller, purveyor, provider of any type of service or product, you will benefit. But if you are, for a minute, you think that your thing is good enough because it's the thing, you're done. So stop worrying about the service and the product. Start worrying about the relationship. All right, we've gone through the factory economy. 
versus the connection economy. I'll touch on it briefly. The factory economy, as I mentioned, you made a product, it sold itself. The Honda is well. think of if anyone grew up in the 80s. Today, it's this connection economy. The connection is what sells, the connection, the person. The, the, you hear about the social investing? Uh, so I'm sorry, socially responsible investing. People wanna put their money where they know what's gonna to happen to it, like how it's going to affect the world. What is the impact going to be? It's not just about the product or service anymore. It's about the people and, and what goes into the providing of that service and product. So the workers in the old days need to become connectors. Workers are laborers, right? However you want to define that. It might have been brains, it might have been hands, it might have been whatever, but they were laborers of some type. Now what sells is connection. So anyone who used to make stuff with their mind or with their hands now needs to learn how to connect to the people who consume that stuff. So connecting is becoming the key, the key component here. Hence the social skills that we are so lacking in the world and you're, it's becoming increasingly relevant. However, right now, we are in a transitional period, right? We all went through the educational system, myself included, and we were taught all about the technical skills that were going to get you the best job, right? This, the, they're still doing this stuff back in the educational factory that we call college slash university. They want you to learn science, technology, engineering, math, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not coming down on that. I myself, I was an arts and crafts guy, so I understand. I'm frankly not as smart as the next guy, and I'm the first one to tell you that. No problem with that. But I will tell you this, I can connect like nobody else. And that may or may not be relevant to what you do, but you need to find out what it is that you can you plug yourself in where you're needed. The world is moving into a place where all that technology, it's so amazing. It's just, it's the, it's the golden era that we've been dreaming of for thousands of years. We're here now. However, somebody's got to plug the cord in because without that type of person, he or she that can make that stuff real and reliable and useful for an end consumer, it doesn't matter. It might be the greatest widget in the world, but if I'm afraid of it, I'm not going to use it. And that's where trust comes in. So technology, no longer a differentiator, no longer the only thing that will carry you. It doesn't matter if you have the best tech. And the truth of the matter is you may have the second best tech and that's okay too. If you've got the connection, I can tell you a million examples of products and companies and on Wall Street specifically, where it's maybe an inferior B technology, but these people that are on the front end of it have the relationship to drive it home. And guess what? There's occasion where the user, the end customer, even knows it's a B product. It's okay. It's easier to use a B product that they trust than an A product that they don't trust. And that's just the reality of life. Commercial activity is a funny thing. It's driven by people. For all the AI, for all the big data, for all the dashboard switchers, allocators, all that technology and software, and it's all real, it's all legit. It doesn't matter, the people are still primary. The end little, the, the end unit, as I like to call it, is it's a person. There's still a person in the system. Until you remove people completely from the process, it's always going to be based off of emotion. That means connection. They have to know, like, and trust you. And after that, afterwards, then they want to know what your thing does. Then they want to know how snazzy your tech is. How do the dilithium crystals work? How do I light the hilt of the lightsaber? How does this stuff all work? But first, I got to know who you are. And you're the same way. Whether you admit it or not, that's the way business works now. All right. So we've run through technology and the rise of the social skills. Clients don't just want product. They want connection. All that bit. How do you learn all this stuff, right? How do you learn what it is you need to know? Are you drilling yourself right now for the skills that you should be acquiring? The ability to inspire, to motivate, to communicate, to make your ideas understood to people who might not be familiar with it, to approach people who would normally be afraid of you because you're selling a product that will put them out of a, a business, meaning the person, and still walk away where they're saying to themselves, hmm, not only do I like that person, but that product is interesting and I am interested in learning about it because even if it does do some damage to me directly, I will be able to leverage it later by repositioning myself at a higher level in the value chain. So I don't want to get too philosophical and too fluffy. The bottom line is connection. Your ability to connect with people will blow open your opportunity as a business, as an individual person, and the future is going to require it. I call myself a salesy type of a guy. I mean, I like to talk, obviously. I'm, f I'm familiar with people. It's, I'm comfortable in front of a crowd. This, going through the eye of the needle here and coming at you through a screen, this is now the new next step in sales. Anybody who's on a phone and doesn't know how to do this, and there's a lot of them out there right now, 
They're going to fall behind. They're going to lose. There's a marathon coming. This is only the beginning. So if you consider yourself any type of a people person and you don't know how to do this, you're not. You're not because this is the new way to do it. How many people were great door-to-door salesmen and didn't pick up the phone and learn how to use the phone when that business? I mean, think about it. This is now the phone. And, and this is nothing compared to what's coming. AI and VR and AR, are on, they're not on their way. They're already being toyed around with. They're not up to speed right now, and I know that, but that's coming too. And that will be a different set of connection skills through those mediums. So the medium matters, the skills matter, but it all starts with the ability to connect. And your customer will use your product once they connect with you and they know, like, and trust you. So you are doing everybody the favor, your customers, yourself and your firm if you get these skill sets down. I'll walk you through them over the coming weeks of what we need to know and some tips and tricks on how you can learn them. I will do everything I can to help you. But you have to be aware that whether or not you learn this, your success rides on it, right? This reality is reality. I may not be familiar with the law of gravity, but if I step off the top floor of the building, what's gonna happen? It doesn't matter if I knew about it or not. This is how it goes with connection now. So. Thanks for sticking through this. We'll run through in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully you enjoyed. Love to hear the feedback. Hit me as you need.